Hello and welcome to the Butterfly Park in Manchester. I'm Monica and I'll be your tour guide for today. So now as we are in the enclosure, um, you can probably feel it's really hot and that's right, it's about 35 degrees in here, um, which is the optimum temperature for the animals. So it's important to keep hydrated as you're walking around. Also, we prohibit any touching of the butterflies to protect them as for their safety. So if you could oblige by that, that would be lovely. However, if a butterfly comes and sits on you, then that's actually seven years good luck. So if that happens, you're a very lucky person. <laughs> seven years good luck that's right and um, the trick is if you want them to do that is to find a place where you're comfortable and either stand or sit there very still and if you remain still they're more likely to come close to you and hopefully land on you so we have about 250 butterflies in the park at the moment, although that number is always kind of growing and as we always have new butterflies coming in. We house mostly butterflies from um, Australia and Africa and the reason for that is because Australian butterflies and African butterflies mate every day and can reproduce every day and European butterflies actually only mate about once or twice a year so it bodes better for us to keep Australian and African butterflies here so that we can have more and also as we are based in Manchester and in Europe um, I'm not really used to seeing these kind of tropical butterflies so it makes for a nicer experience as you can imagine or as you know because we're here so first thing I'd like to talk to you about is um, butterflies and how they come about how what's their you know biological um, life span um, and they start off as caterpillars or this is the larva stage as we like to call them and they start off as caterpillars and some of them as caterpillars can have these little hairs or slight spikes and some caterpillars that if you touch them as a human these spikes can have a toxin in them which can be quite dangerous so it's careful not to touch too many caterpillars unless you're in Manchester in which case they're probably pretty safe domestic styles of caterpillars but anyway it's a caterpillar before it descends into its next stage for several days caterpillar will just eat and eat and eat and eat just to make its body start to swell it will consume so much and then the day before it starts to cocoon itself it doesn't eat at all and it spins a cocoon, a pod, for itself to sit in. And this is the phase that we call the chrysalis phase, when the caterpillar is fully engulfed in a cocoon. And we have some on display over there, which you can go and see in a minute. So while they're in this cocooned chrysalis phase, gradually the, um, the caterpillar starts to release um, a certain type of enzyme and an acid and it starts to kind of disintegrate its whole body it it starts to break its whole body apart so it and then the whole caterpillar within the chrysalis turns into this, this sludge sludge like material liquid and when a caterpillar is first born it's born with what we call imaging discs and these imaging discs hold the makeup for the certain parts of the butterfly. So there's 
a disc for the vertebrae, there's a disc for its antenna, there's a disc for its head. And while it's in this pulp-like phase where it's liquid in the cocoon, that's where these imaging discs come in handy. So these imaging discs bind with the protein and enzymes around it from the, the caterpillar sludge. And that is what starts to form the different parts of the butterfly. And sometimes some caterpillars in some breeds, they actually already have small wings underneath the caterpillar body that you can't see on the surface, but they're tucked underneath the surface layer of skin. Um, so these start to fully form as well in this pulp phase. So the imaging discs are taking the protein and the enzymes that are surrounding them from the caterpillar's disintegration and it starts flicking away to turn this sludge and disc solution into a butterfly. And then gradually the butterfly starts to form and when it's ready, it wriggles and wriggles and wriggles until the cocoon starts to break and then a lovely, beautiful butterfly emerges. So the imagery of the butterfly is um, it's a very very popular and very beautiful image in society and a lot of people see the um, formation of butterflies to be a, a, a rebirthing spiritual kind of um, experience and you know their lifespan represents something within their own lives that they think you know symbolizes a kind of transformation um, which is one of the reasons why I think butterfly tattoos are, are so popular. But anyway, here we have 200 butterflies from Australia and Africa. And I've got some interesting facts about butterflies that I'd like to talk to you about. And there's some ones there that I found really interesting. So. Butterflies, they can't hear, but they can feel vibrations. So they can hear in a sense, but it's through the vibrations in the air and sound waves. Also, butterflies taste with their feet. So while you're walking around, you'll see that there's um, some, some little plates with honey on, or little jars with fruit on for the butterflies to eat and you'll kind of see that they're not really eating with their heads they're kind of touching with their feet uh, butterflies don't have lungs and they can breathe through openings in their abdomen called spiracles so kind of like fish in a sense these spiracles act as gills Butterflies can also smell with their antennae and the scales that make up their wings are made up by basically millions of shingles that overlap to create the colour and the scale effect on the butterfly's wings. And if these scales are removed, and they can be removed through, through, through injury or um, some sort of trauma, um, they can still, a they're still able to fly. They might might be less colourful, but they're still able to fly and live without the scales and the colour. Female butterflies tend to live longer than males and tend to be physically bigger as well. For example, the Queen Alexandra's bird wing from the island of New Guinea is the largest butterfly and it actually has a wingspan of 27 centimetres. That's big. That's pretty big. Um, butterflies are related to crabs and lobsters. And the reason for this is because they have their skeletons on the outside of their bodies, which is called, which when animals have their skeletons on the outside of their bodies, it's called um, exoskeletons. There are about 24,000 species of butterfly. Australia alone has 385 species of butterfly and nearly 70% of those are found in rainforests of the wet tropics. 
so you can see why we decided to choose butterflies from Australia. The painted lady is the most widespread butterfly species in the world. It occurs on all continents apart from South America and Antarctica. And Antarctica is actually the only content on which no butterflies have been found. No butterflies or caterpillars have been found at all in Antarctica. Some butterflies, such as the northern pearly eye, will fly only at night time. And butterflies are the second largest group of pollinators. Bees are the largest, but butterflies also pollinate flowers. Monarch butterflies have been known to migrate over 3,000 kilometers. Monarch butterflies are very distinctive. Um, I mean, certainly in the UK, the monarch butterfly is the image of a butterfly that is used most often on, you know, in textbooks and on, you know, branding for things when they want to have a butterfly. The monarch butterfly is kind of like a red and orange and black. It's a very iconic butterfly um, in the UK. And the largest threat to butterflies is the loss of their habitat. So that's why there needs to be more parks like this that exist in order to protect the butterflies and keep the species still going. And this is also important as, um, you know, as I said, the bees are the main pollinating insects and we know the bees are starting to decline and, you know, we need to protect the bees as well. But as butterflies are also pollinators, they need to be protected too. So I hope you enjoy your trip here with us today. Um, feel free to have a look, walk around state as long as you like, and I'll be here if you have any questions, you can come over and ask me. Okay, take care. Bye.